Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Drone to 1K podcast by Drone Launch Academy. I am your host, David Young, and I'm excited to bring you another episode from season four. Um, today we're gonna be talking to Derek Cameron. And one thing I like uh, about Derek is that uh, he has been a Drone to 1K podcast listener for a long time and had listened to the podcast and then decided to start his own drone business, uh, started it up and got it to a point where he qualified to be on the podcast. Uh, which is where you're making at least a thousand dollars a month or more. Um, again, we've had people on this podcast making a few hundred thousand dollars a year. Some people um, making on the low range, you know, the thousand dollar a month range. Um, so we want to give you a broad spectrum. Everybody from people who are just starting out to very seasoned to people doing it on the side. Um, so uh, it was really cool to see Derek go from nothing, uh, listening to the podcast, just getting insights. I think he's taken a couple of our courses and has built it to where he's um, has a business now. So it's really exciting to see that. I was really excited to talk to Derek and hear some of the interesting things he's doing um, with 3D printed uh, images inside of snow globes, uh, working on political campaign videos, also incorporating his drone work. So um, some interesting things that we dive into on this podcast and excited for you to hear it. Um, real quick before we dive in, if you're enjoying this podcast and you would like to leave uh, an honest review, go to Apple iTunes uh, and leave us a review there. If you do that and you screenshot it and you send it to uh, me and George, so that's uh, J-O-R-G-E at DroneLaunchAcademy.com and me, David at DroneLaunchAcademy.com, George will get you a, uh, a t-shirt for saying uh, thanks for taking the time to leave us a podcast review and be a fan. So uh, if you want to do that, you can. Uh, also, I always like to mention we have a couple... Uh, we call them mini courses, but they're just shorter courses. We have one called Drones 101, another called Mavic Mini 101, and another one called Mini 2 Mastery. Um, Mini 2 Mastery is all about the new DJI Mavic Mini 2 drone, or new-ish at the time of this recording. Um, but it gives you flight exercises, tells you everything about the drone. Uh, Drones 101 is like kind of an intro to the drone industry, also has flight exercises, talks about the sensors, how drones work, just a lot of really good information if you're newer to drones or um, kind of starting to practice. Um, you get any of those courses for just a dollar by using the word uh, podcast as the promo code. So go check that out if you're interested in uh, getting some cheapo, mostly freebies. So, all right, that's uh, all I've got for now. If you, uh, if you have any uh, comments or if you'd like to be a podcast guest, actually, we are recruiting um, some people for episode, or sorry, for season five of the podcast. So if you're making more than $1,000 a month with your drone, doing anything from agriculture to mapping uh, to video production, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, shoot me an email, david at dronelaunchacademy.com, and someone will follow up with you. All right, thanks, and uh, let's get to the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Drone to 1K podcast. I'm here with Derek Cameron. Uh, thanks for jumping on the podcast with us, Derek. David, great. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm fanboying a little bit here because I've been a uh, student and uh, brand loyal to the, the Drone Launch Academy uh, suite of, uh, of, of educational uh, splendors uh, for the last couple of years. So being able to get on here um, as a uh, Drone of 1K guest, um, you know, it, it's, 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 it's humbling because it's like, all right, something's working out. And also, yeah. um, you know, you guys have been, uh, you guys have been on my screen for the last couple of years. So it's, it's, it's a pretty cool, <laughs> it's a pretty cool honor. So thank you. Awesome. No, I'm glad you're able to be on here, you know, just for some context for people listening. Um, Derek reached out, hit me up on email and said, Hey, David, I've been listening to the podcast. It's been my goal to get to the 1k mark. I made it. Can I get on the podcast? And I was like, absolutely. Let's do it. So, um, so we jumped on, even though I only sent him the, <laughs> I feel bad. I forgot to send him the link to the podcast until like five minutes beforehand, but here we are. Uh, we're all on. So now I appreciate you coming on and I'm excited to hear your story. Um, I'm thinking that it will be really, really relatable to many of our listeners who, because I know a lot of people listen to this, maybe they've just started a drone business and they're dabbling. We, I'm sure there's people that have experienced drone businesses and they can always pull little things out. But a lot of people are just like checking out, what is a drone business like? Can I do one? Trying to pick up some tips. Hey, I'm getting started. Like, what do I do? You know, it's, it's always helpful to hear from other people. I know for me personally, a business, any business that I've ever done, I've tried to listen to podcasts or read books or get experience from other people. And you can just learn so much faster that way. And that way you can cut out a lot of mistakes that other people have done. So you have kind of been on that journey recently. So hopefully people will have a lot to learn from you. So why don't we start? Um, why don't you just give us some background 
on, you know, how you even became interested in drones in the first place and maybe any other relevant info about yourself and kind of how you got on this path. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, I'll, I'll bring up speed as quickly as I can. So I was in um, for about 13 years um, up until uh, middle of 2019, I'd been in higher ed. So I was working in career services and I was also doing employer relations um, within that, within those departments. And it was a lot of work with students and it was also a lot of work with employers. And one of the things that was really most fulfilling was you know, having conversations with students and really trying to be real with them about like what their, you know, career ambitions are and, and, and not try to just give a lot of bit of fluffy answers. Um, pulling that from conversation that I have with employers, but really the, the fulfilling part was like, I worked with a lot of entrepreneurs and startup founders. And I just found as I was going along the way um, through my time on, in, in the, on campus, like that was really the most interesting aspects of the job. And concurrent to that, I was also working with more aerospace companies. And it was just two areas that were just like incredibly fascinating mm -hmm. for me. And I'm a podcast addict. So I would listen to just entrepreneur podcasts like all the time on the commuter rail and mm -hmm. on campus walking the dog. Like, so it was just constantly like through osmosis. I'm like, I just love this stuff. And I'm like, all right, I'm working a nine to five job and I'm like, you know, what can I do with my life at some point? Mm -hmm. um, and then we started having kids a few years ago and uh, my daughter was born in 2018. And, you know, being on the commuter rail, being, you know, a, a parent, you know, to an infant and just trying to manage everything was just like, it was a, it was pretty grueling. Sure. So putting a pin in that back up, to the previous summers, we went out to my um, in-laws out in central New York for um, a wedding. And my uh, wife's nephew had gotten a um, drone for his birthday. It was just like, a, I don't even know what kind it was, just, you know, $100 drone. Okay. And it was still in the box. And I'm like, what's this thing doing here? <laughs> it was just like, like, I don't know, it's really hard to use. And I'm like, so I'm like tearing it out of the box, sticking my phone in there, like, you know, no directions, no nothing. I'm like, I'm just getting this thing running. So I got it in, launched it, and they've got farmland like behind their house. Cool. So I've got, you know, this drone in the air and I'm just flying it around. I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. I'm like, this is yeah. incredible. So <laughs> was it real quick? Was it a drone that had like a, I know you said you don't remember what type, was it one that has like a, a camera sending a signal back where you can see what's going on or are you just yeah it, it, was like, and you're, and it was one of those like you know cell phone signal dropping off so you've got like you know you're flying it and like you know you're losing signal and, and but you so, can kind of see it as it was live yeah saying. okay cool so i'm fascinated by this because i'm you know i'm, I'm looking at this like cornfield um behind the house and i've gotten all these cool angles on it um and then um end up like, you know, crashing it because like, you know, battery ran low. So <laughs> I was like, all right, you know, lesson learned on that. But it was just kind of like, it was like the little kernel, um, you know, no pun intended. It was just kind of like the little seed that was like, yeah. that was really cool. So at some point over the course of the year, between like burning out over higher ed and then trying to figure out like, you know, what my next steps are, I started looking into like, you know, what, are, what can you do with drones? And I was just amazed at like, it, it wasn't like, you know, the multi-million dollar industry. It was like billion dollar, it was multi-billion dollar industry. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, this is untapped. Not really, there's not a huge market around me. And suddenly like, you know, the floodgates of, you know, the floodgates started opening up and I'm like, I can figure out how I can do this. So mm -hmm. I had, um, there was major changes going on in my um, department and it was just, it was just bad fit all around um, going into the springtime. And I was like, managed to negotiate a um, severance from the university. And I was at home with my daughter um, and I was trying to figure out what's the next step. So I was like, at some point, you know, my wife's like, you know, you know, one of those like inspirational story moments is where you're like, you know, if you can do anything, you know, you know, all factors be damned. And like, yeah. you know, what would you do? And I'm sure she regrets it to this day, but I'm just like, <laughs> I was going to say kudos what? to your wife for asking you. <laughs> I know. I think she's like, I shouldn't have said it. So, you know, I thought on it for a few days. I'm like, you know what? I'm like, I want to, I, I want to figure out what I can do with a drone business. And, um, you know, I just feel by, you know, listen to podcasts, like just really getting so like enamored of founders and like just how much 
even the hard work that they put in, like they all just seem so like satisfied at the end of the day, no matter how grueling things are. I mean, you can attest to it going, you know, going through the whole drone launch story. Yeah. You know, and I used to work, you know, I had regular jobs for the first 10 years or so after I graduated from college and I did accounting stuff and used to work for the government. And even when I had regular jobs, um, or, you know, like a normal, I, I enjoyed the work I was doing. I enjoyed my jobs, but there's just something satisfying knowing like, even when I was doing, I was doing consult side consulting for accounting stuff, completely different from Jones. I did that for a little while when I first got out or when after, after college on the side. And even that it's just something really satisfying knowing, Hey, if I put in more work, I have higher potential. Like I have, yeah. you know, there's just not really like a cap where at, you know, my job, you know, I would work hard, but it's not like, Oh, I would, the, I was directly compensated with in conjunction with, it's like people that were killing themselves and crushing it. We're making about the same as the people who are kind of just there coasting. And so it's a little demoralizing. So it's like, I'm mostly just working for self self-worth versus, you know, at least in, in the government, that was a little bit of my experience. Um, but I just like the fact that when you own your own business, whether it's a drone business or a service business or whatever, um, you know, you get in what you, you get out what you put into it. And so, yeah, it can be kind of, you can have some, some dips, but just the, the knowledge that, Hey, the more I learn and the more action I take and the better I get at this, I can just like keep going up and it just depends on me. And there's just something satisfying about doing that, you know? Yeah. That's the whole thing. It's like, you know, you're only going to be as successful as the amount of sweat equity that you're going to put into something. I mean, there's yeah, for, more, many more sure. variables to that. And we can touch on that as we talk about this. Um, but you know, it's, you work at a certain level in any you know vocation and you're like, all right, I get my two and a half percent cost of living bump every year. And you're like, you know, all right, I got my little, <laughs> you know, I got my commuter rail bump. And you're just like, go oh, year after year. And you're like, maybe you get promoted or maybe you leave a job and like, you've got to like demonstrate your self-worth to somebody again through the whole interviewing process. And I'm like, it was just like, it was just kind of like fading on me. And I'm like, sure. I, I, I got to do something like maybe, you know, am I unemployable? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I got to do something to kind of break the streak because I just felt sure. like I'd been floundering for years. Um, so, you know, as I was going through the summer, um, I ended up dropping like, you know, 150 bucks on the the, the token. I think it was a Potensic, um, whatever, you know, $150 drone. Um, okay. You know, ended up clipping a branch, flew off, disappeared. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. Um, you know, not the most auspicious start of a drone career. And, um, you know, I didn't but hear any basically every, everybody's same start. So don't, <laughs> exactly. you know, what? it's like, I chalked it up this way. I'm like, there was no screeching metal breaks or screams. So I'm like, all right, it just landed safely somewhere in the ether. So we're all good. Um, <laughs> nice. Amazon refunded my, uh, my investment. So, you know, I just rolled it over to a, a $200 drone. And then, um, you know, bang that against the walls and trees and stuff like that. But, you know, through it, you know, getting the, the flight time and getting comfortable, getting learn, you know, learning how to use the um, flight controls and just getting comfortable with having something in the air. Um, so at some point I was like, you know what, I, I think it's time to like make the investment because I was getting re- this is when I was getting really interested in it. And um, I started studying for the 107, you know, sometime around September, October. Um, and, um, got the drone launch, my buddy had gotten, um, the drone launch Academy, um, 107 exam. And he's like, dude, it's awesome. He's like, it's fantastic to do that one. So I was like, so I signed up for it, um, and started studying for that. And then I got the Mavic 2 Pro still alive. Nice. Um, Great. And, uh, and just started getting flight time, um, you yeah. know, taking pictures, doing video, learn how to fly, learn how to work the gimbal, learn how to, you know, work the controllers, understanding the, the um, you know, the um, aperture, tri- the focal triangle or the light triangle, sorry, um, how everything interplays. And, you know, and while that's all happening, I'm signing up for like creative live um classes, U- Udemy classes, teachable classes, nice. stack, skills, stack you're just classes. Getting out there, you're just getting out there and learning everything you can. I love it. Yeah, exactly. I was like Bruce Willis in, in uh, Invincible, where he's just like standing at the stadium and he's just like got his hands out and like learning what everybody's lives is. I was like, I was just <laughs> pulling it all in. I was like the Matrix. Um, so I was just ingesting any kernel of information I could get. Um, so I was like, you know, nighttime of YouTube's podcast. So it was just you know, trying to just build it all in. So I ended up passing the 107 in December. 
Um, and then is this December like, right, of which year? 2019. Okay. All right. So everything's looking great. So, you know, yeah. you know, we go into the holidays. I'm like, all right, we're going to start 2020 off in a great note. So, you know, we started working out childcare for my, my youngest daughter, my other daughters in preschool. So we're like, all right, you know, we've got some stability here. And, um, you know, come, uh, I was like February, like everything's a go. Um, and then, um, I started, uh, I, I filed my paperwork on March 5th with the state. So I filed my 3805 LLC entity. And then two weeks later, the entire world comes to a screech. Oh boy. So, well, hey, you know uh, what? You get tested, get tested at right up front. So you can yeah, make it past so that it, then. It was, it was a little bit of a bummer um, to, uh, to come out of the gate and realize that, you know, whatever I'm planning on doing is going to be severely compromised. Um, but, you know, making lemonade out of that, um, you know, I had, you know, you can't go anywhere. So it's, you know, I'm walking my dog every day in the middle of the woods. There's a nice park a uh, few miles away. <clears throat> so the town essentially became my canvas. So I bring my mm -hmm. I bring my um, drone out and then I have a cannon that my wife had given me um, a few years ago before her daughter, oldest daughter was born. So just learning the drone just the, you know, photography is photography. So whether it's flying sure. or whether it's handheld. So yep. I just started working. All the working principles are the same. I just started working and practicing both of those. Um, so I just started taking pictures. And then, you know, I had one day where it's just like, everyone's cooped up in the house. And I'm like, I got to get out of here. So I just went out. It was a nice late afternoon. Um, and I had um, thrown the drone up um, over a church in my town. And I took a shot and was like, oh, this came out pretty good. And then, you know, throughout it, I've been posting pictures up on um, a Facebook group in my town. Okay. Um, just, you know, different perspective. And people started going nuts over it. They were like, oh, my God, this is incredible. Like, you know, people that had moved away years ago, they're like raving about, you know, an old landmark that they hadn't seen in forever from a different perspective. So I had posted the church shot up and a um, owner of a uh, print framer in town was like, reached out to me and he's like, that was an incredible shot. I don't know if you know it. And I was like, you know, thank you. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And so I just took a look closer to it. And it was just like, there were no cars in the road. It was golden hour. It was like everything, like inadvertently, I had created a like an amazing timeless photo. <laughs> nice. So I was like, all right, you know, maybe I got a little talent here. Um, so getting to the point of that, though, is, is this guy's like, you know, you might want to think about selling that. So it's just like, I'd never thought about selling a photo or anything in my life up to that point. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so it's just like, you know, I'm looking at this going into like, you know, I want to do real estate. I want to do, you know, I want to get into construction videos and mapping and everything. And, um, you know, suddenly, you know, there's like an avenue of like another revenue stream. So it's just yeah. like putting a little pin in that and just knowing that. Um, so he, you know, created a storefront for me through his, uh, and I'll, can I plug oh, nice. in? Sure. Go for it. Sure. A preservation framer, North Attleboro, Massachusetts. Okay. Um, awesome. so, um, yeah, amazing work that he does. So he created a storefront for me. So I've been able to sell photos through that. Um, nice. That's cool. Yeah. So, so essentially like, you know, it was just a lather, rinse, repeat of that throughout the course of 2020 is like, all right, I can only go out for a certain amount of time every day because my wife's working full time. We've got the kids at home. So I was like, how can I make the most of what I'm going to do for the next 90 minutes? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> on the way out to um, the place where I walk my dog, there's a hay farm and, you know, I drive by there every single day and then you just start seeing the cutting and everything. And I'm like, you know, farm equipment is just always cool to get yeah. photos and videos. Like, it's, just, it's awesome. So I stopped by one day and I, re I reached out through Facebook and I'm like, hey, I'm like, I, you know, I own a local business in town. I'm like, you know, would you mind if I, you know, did some shots and some video for you? And they were like, absolutely. So, you know, she drove me out in the middle of the field with her Polaris and, um, you know, four wheeler and her husband's nice. out there with the uh, doing the tethering, like doing the fluff and fold after a cut. And I'd spent like the next couple of days just getting like footage everywhere. And I'm like, cool. This is like, I'm like, I'm on to something life wise. I'm like, this is like, you know, I'm not making a dime on this, but it was just awesome. So it's like, I need portfolio material. They're getting marketing material. 
I'm in the middle of a hay farm with my drone in the air. I'm like, you know what? Take a moment, appreciate what's going on here. And, um, and, and, and you know, take stock in it. Yeah. So, you know, I created the video um, out of that and took a bunch of photos. And again, you know, it was just like, they were excited. Like they were showing it to, um, they were showing it to their friends and they were like, you know, really exciting thing. And yeah. You know, the uh, Logan Mankins, former Patriot, a lot of Patriots live in my town. Um, you know, he was looking at it. He owns a farm in town too. And I'm like, if you want to let Logan know, you know, he's yeah. a cool <laughs> video. So, um, yeah. so no, I yeah, think that's it, awesome. it, yeah, it was, it was a, a lot of that. Um, yeah. I was gonna say, well, that's one thing I think it's awesome is you hear it time and time again from people that come on the podcast. It's like, Hey, how'd you get started? Well, Step one, I, you know, got some confidence with my drone flying it around. Step two, I um, went out and kind of looked around what would be cool to shoot. How can I get good experience? And these team ups people, hey, can I shoot a video for you? Or, hey, can I do this sample work for you? Because then that gives you credibility with people whenever you want to go forward. Because the first question is, if you ever want to get a paying job, oh, hey, and you can communicate, hey, here's what I want to do for you. Here's why I think it would be good for you. They're going to say, oh, cool. Can I see an example of how you've done that for someone else? And if you have nothing to show, it's a harder sell, but then you have, but if you're stocking up all these things, right, your portfolio, whether it's on the creative side with these images you're taking and the videos you're taking, or even if it's construction, like, oh, hey, look at these ortho mosaic maps that I've created and look at how I did the volume calculations or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, have, being able to explain how you've helped other people before it just makes life so much easier. So I think you're doing like, like, the exact, you know, right steps that we see. Yeah. Cause it's like, you know, you, you know, in order to get experience, you have to, you know, in order to like get experience, you have to, I forget how the adage goes, but it's yeah, like, right, right. you know, it's, it's the whole weird feedback. Every, it's like that. the, every entry level job requires 10 years of experience or, you know, whatever. Yeah. In order to get 10 years of experience, you got to get the entry level job somewhere. Yeah. So like, right, right. You know, I, sucked it it up. I was just like, I'm going to do some unpaid work for a while, but it was like, yeah. it was on my terms. So it was things that were interesting right. to me. So I felt like the quality of that would come through. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I was able to, you know, I was able to do that. And then my, um, my uh, framing buddy had reached out in the summer. To, um, you know, so I'd gotten a couple of some real estate jobs from that. So it was like, you know, a couple of bucks trickling in here and there. Um, so you got some oh, real quick. Here. Hold on. You just, you just glossed right over that. Go, and then I got paid for a bunch of jobs. Hold <laughs> <Right>. on. <laughs> like, whoa, whoa. Um, so you from the, are you talking about from the farm video that you did led to some paid work in real estate? Yeah. Or so something else. The, so everything that I did was like, I'm just going to just post it up through, you know, Facebook. And I'm like, sure. you know, it, good, bad, and indifferent. Like, you know, it was a, it was a voice amplifier. Cause there was like, I don't know, there's a few groups in my town that have like, you know, nine to 10,000 members in there. So, okay. you know, if you're getting 500 likes on a photo, well, your name's going to stick around for a little bit. And if you keep doing it and you're putting some volume in there, it's like, you know, a little bit of brand familiarity. So yeah, consistency, you know, another thing that's really important. Yes. Yeah. So I was just like, I'm like, some of the photos weren't the greatest things I'd ever done, but I'm like, you know what? Like it's going to appeal to somebody, you know, I'm my own worst critic. So, yep. you know, I kept posting things up there and it was like, people were enjoying it. So there was an entertainment value behind it. But then I would get contacted for some realtors and they're like, you know, Hey, can you take some pictures of the building? I just need to send it over for like bank. Um, cool. Or I've got some real estate jobs. I can use drone photos. So I was able nice. to get a couple of jobs out of that. Um, now were those paying jobs and, or those are just more kind of free work for portfolio stuff? No, they were paying jobs. So, it was, you know, I think I came out and I was like charging like 125, I think like a hundred for one, 125. And then even a, a couple of people had reached out about some commission jobs, um, that I was okay. charging the same thing. Um, so and those are just for photos, yeah. right? What's that? Was that just for photos or is that you doing video yes. stuff too? Yes. Just, just for photos. Cool. Um, so Sorry, I didn't mean to glass glance and glaze over that. No, test. it's just I think it's so funny how you know I'll have people on here. I don't know if it's people they don't want to brag or what I don't know, but you'll hear people and they they'll tell these stories and then write the parts that everybody wants to know the details of. They're like, oh yeah, and then I made like I don't know ten thousand dollars, and then and they move like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I just like to dig in because I know everybody's listening, going, wait, did he say he's got paying jobs? How did they go from? How did he go from here to here? You know, because that's what everybody wants to know. So yeah, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to yada yada. That no, way. no, it's um, no, it's fine. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's like you know, doing the uh, doing the accounting and government work. 
uh, let, let's just mention that there's a little bit of yada yada in an entire FBI career. So I'm not going <laughs> to let that one go unnoticed, man. <laughs> well, people don't get on this podcast to hear about that. They hear, they want to hear uh, about drones. So I try to, uh, I try to, yeah, stick you can do the separate podcast one. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, I was able to get, you know, a little bit of like fits and start work there. Um, uh, you know, you're in the middle of a pandemic, so you don't know where anything's going. Um, so I'm, my goal for the year was like, let me just keep getting portfolio material and just building mm-hmm. contacts. Um, so <clears throat> backing up just a little bit, um, my framer friend, um, he, Matt keeps coming into this. So he's been a mm-hmm. huge advocate for me and awesome. he's really done a lot to, to help out. And I, yeah, I think this goes to, you know, to show like how important it is to build people in your network, even if it's not direct customers, but just people that will refer you, advocate for you, just be a sounding board for you. The more people you can build up mm-hmm. in your network and in your, where, where you are in yeah. business, it's just people put l- m- much, uh, they need to put a lot more emphasis on that. What I'm trying to say, you know, so I think I'm glad yeah, you're absolutely. doing that. And I, in my, uh, in my, in my book of notes here that I had written and sent to you the other day, um, I'd written down community. Cause I think that really is like a critical component to anybody's success is like, yeah. re- and it's not just, you know, having a stable of people that you know, it's also being able to engage with them and to be, you know, really have a reciprocal relationship a lot of yeah. them with a lot of folks because, you know, if you can do somebody a good turn, it's going to come back to you. And, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, with a pandemic too, it was one of the things that was just like, you know, being able to display a little humanity and take care of one another and take care of your fellow man um, and woman, um, you know, you know, it was going to come back and help at some point, but it was just fulfilling to be like, we're all in a really cruddy situation. So if I can help somebody out. Um, and, and one of the ways that we did that was um, he had asked me if I wouldn't mind doing a um, portrait series of business owners in the town. Um, cool. So, and that was all handheld. So it wasn't drone work, but it was, you know, I'd never done portrait work before. So it was just an incredibly you know, gratifying experience because I'm now meeting business owners that are yeah. directly impacted by COVID and I'm doing portraits of them. So it was really raw and it was very like emotional. So I got to know them in a, like a, a really deep basis, like almost immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, and all these photos are going up on the, um, the Facebook uh, page um, that he runs for the downtown businesses. Cool. So, you know, I'm now getting my name known through doing that, but I'm also getting practice doing portrait work. And Mm -hmm. then I'm doing the drone work. So it's all kind of like, you know, starting to like mesh a little bit where I'm trying to figure out where to take the business. So moving into the fall, um, (laughs) Matt reached out again and he's like, "Um, this guy's running for state representative. Would you mind doing his headshots in this campaign video? And I was just like, no, let's do it. I've never done either. I've never done any political campaigns at all. Um, So I was like, let's do it. And it was, again, it was like an incredibly fulfilling experience to, you know, do, you know, talking headshots. I threw some drone work in there. So it was just, it was just a lot of, you know, being able to build off of the community that I was helped, you know, I'm plugging into that I'm doing work for them. And then it's coming back to help me out. Yeah. Um, And I, I think an important thing that I'm hearing from you on that one is like, the people that I know that end up having success, they they don't say no when a job seems either in like intimidating or out of reach or whatever. You could have been like, oh, I've never done video before or I don't know about that. Ah, you know, I, you could you could have been like hesitant about it, but you're like, yeah, let's do it. I, like you said, I've never done that before, but I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to try to make it good. You know, and the fact that you're just willing to jump in and go after it is the kind of uh I know it's not a personality trait, but just like the kind of attribute you have to have in order to like make it work. So I love that. Love to hear you like just jumping in and go for it. Yeah, absolutely. No, man, I was like a duck in the water with this one because I'm like, you know, this guy is running for state rep. So it's a pretty high stakes, you know, opportunity. And I've never done any of this stuff. And I'm just getting comfortable doing Premiere Pro. And Mm -hmm. I'm like tying in handheld stuff with drone stuff. I'm doing voiceover work. So like I'm like buying equipment that I've never even tested out before. And it's all just getting thrown in like live. And I'm like, 
you know, please. But I bet you made a, so much more progress in your learning doing it, doing that than oh, yeah, if you absolutely. would have just waited to naturally feel motivated to randomly learn that stuff. You know what I mean? I'd feel like everybody, we need pressure to like push us along and all that stuff. Yeah. And even for my business, right? I have to like sometimes be like, hey, by the way, send an email. We're going to launch this course on this date. That way I like force myself to finish everything that needs to happen in time. I think stuff like situations like that are great for you because now you have a reason that forces you to level up your skills and learn all those things. You know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was, you know, I could have barked at it and been like, you know, I'm not comfortable and, you know, maybe next time, but it's like, when's that next time going to happen? Exactly. And, you know, and, and, you know, I'd, you know, I was sitting at, you know, I'm sitting in my office here, it's a converted bedroom, but, you know, I'm sitting in here at like two in the morning on Premiere Pro bashing my head against a keyboard. <laughs> and I've got like an eight gig, you know, RAM, you know, laptop that's like stuttering through like trying to render <laughs> clips. And I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm a no talent, like jabroni. I'm like, I can't like, I'm, how am I going to do this? Like, and I'm like, I got to deliver this product to the guy like in a few days. And I'm like, I can't do this. And it was just like, all right, yeah, we had that thought. Now let's get back to work. And it's just <laughs> like, you know, so he got the video, you know, he loved it. Um, you know, great. everything, you know, came out, you know, it came out great as far as, you know, you know, I, I look at it. Um, so it's like, all right, you know, put that one in the experience box. Yeah. And uh, and move on from it. Um, That's he, awesome. So you had, so you had that experience, you did some real estate work. Yeah. Now, when did, was, when did that job take place? Uh, the real estate stuff? Uh, well, I, the real estate stuff sounded like it was like, what, early 2020 or mid 2020? Uh, it was, so everything that I was talking about is all 2019. So it was like from, oh. like, it was like summer on into the fall. Okay. <clears throat> so then, so then you got, you know, well, so after the pandemic happened, you kind of, we're just doing your, your portfolio work and just practicing. And when did it kind of start moving into getting more paying jobs and kind of take us through, I guess, out of mid 2020 when all the pandemics, well, I guess the pandemics that was still pretty full swing, but how did you get through that and talk about that experience coming out of that? Uh, you know, I mean, part of it, is, you know, I had an unemployment claim that I was able to roll over and some, you know, some government support there. Sure. That, that um, helps for sure. But, you know, it, you know, so it was like what I wasn't making was able to at least have some sort of like, um, you know, have some sort of income, but it was the real estate work was coming in like the fall of 2019, the campaign was happening in the fall of 2019. And then, um, going into the fall, I was, um, still trying to, you know, my, the, really my focus is like, I wanted to do construction. You yep. know, it's just all my research was like, I want to do construction. And it's not that I didn't want to do real estate. It was just like, you know, I know that's a saturated market. So if I hung, you know, put all my eggs in that basket, it would be a really, you know, really dicey prospect. So construction was like really where I wanted to really focus. And it was just exciting too. Um, mm -hmm. So that was kind of where I was going with it. And I'd like, you know, throw my drone over like some construction sites to try to like get some, sure. you know, get the token, like, you know, Hey, I'm doing the work. Like, here's a cool photo. Um, but it wasn't until um, a few months ago when um, I was doing some work for a friend. Um, I did his headshots um, for, um, for a new job. He started with um, outdoor pride. I got to do a little plug for Matt, um, another Matt, um, so he called me like a few days later and he's like, Hey, he's like, I got something for you. And he said, um, I got a guy that's doing construction and he needs, he needs like a ton of work done. So it's just like, all right. Awesome. So connected with him. And then, um, you know, this is probably going back about a month and a half ago, um, uh, two months ago. And he was like, I've got a job like, you know, this is outside of Boston. Um, so, you know, a lot of affluent communities, a lot of, you know, a lot of constructions of like new, modern, mega expensive homes. So okay. he was doing a gut job of a house. And he's like, I need you to do site progress work for that. And it was just like, ding, 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 ding. Awesome. Um, so, you know, 
next thing, you know, and again, it's like, I'd never done this before. I'd never done like site progress work before. So it's just like, yeah, let's do it. This is exciting. So yeah, went over there. And then he's like, I've got two other jobs for you too. And he's like, I need two This is the guy, this is your friend or the guy that ended up hiring you? So as I did headshots for my friend and then um, he reached out from another mutual person with this construction, it was JC Caruso in uh, Newton. And um, they do hardscaping, like business development, um, and then home reconstruction. So they do a little bit. They do a lot, landscape mm-hmm. design. So okay. they had just finished a couple of hardscape jobs in addition to this house renovation. So he's got a number of irons in the fire. So he wanted to start really bolstering a lot of his marketing material. So he says, you know, can you come and shoot videos for these other jobs? So I was like, absolutely. So you know, brought the drone over and I just started doing drone video of that. So it was just nice. like, you know, and that's where I was like, and, and I think it was like a few, like a week or two later where I reached out to you where I'm like, wow, like I just, I'm like money started to come in now. And I then, got, yeah. And then I got a call from, I got a text like a week or two ago from the same guy introducing me to another realtor on the text and it was like, this guy needs drone footage of a construction job outside Boston. Um, you know, cause he's got a uh, new property that they're building right next to the Charles river. So we want to get some shots off the river and we want to get some skyline shots of Boston. It was just like, well, like this is happening. Um, yeah. so this morning I was up in Watertown mass and I got the drone flying over the Charles river and getting skyline shots of Boston. And That's it was great. just like, you know, throughout all this, like, I just, like, I noted it last week, but I did it again today where I'm like, wow, like, this is like everything that I put the work into, like, two years ago and, like, really thought through, like, how I want to do this. Like, it's happening. Like, it's really yeah. happening. So it's just like, take the moment to appreciate it. Yeah. Well, and kudos to you for hanging on, too, because, you know, like you said, you tried to start up, COVID happened. <laughs> For a lot of people, they would have just gotten demoralized and said, whatever, forget it. And maybe you just moved on to something else. But yeah. you were like, no, you, you stuck with it. Right. And you pushed through. <clears throat> and now you're starting to see the fruits of that. I think you're consistent, persistent, you know, I think is important. Right. I just it's so funny to see all the common threads that happen with everybody that ends up, you know, doing well. You just oh, God, you see yeah. all these things. And uh, and I just I, I love that. It's it's really funny how you how you're saying like, oh, it, this hit and then this hit. And it just kind of started opening up. You know, I do, we just were recording some uh, some new videos the other day for one of our courses, and I was I was trying to explain the concept that I see all the time for it's really any service business, which drones is you know it's a service business, right? You're performing a service for someone, and they're paying you for it. Um, and it's like you you constantly are putting things out into the world, right? So you're uploading your photos and videos to Facebook. You meet people. You say, hey, can I you know give you some free drone work or can I use this to practice? You're just constantly, you know, practicing, putting things out there, meeting people, trying to do favors for other people, knowing that, Hey, you know, it's, I, I'm sure it'll come back You know, all these things. And I almost think about it like a, like a minesweeper board. I don't know if you remember the old like windows when they had like the minesweeper game on there, but like yeah. you click, you click around on the board and like you're clicking one and it's like, maybe it opens up one box and you click another one. Maybe and then it opens you get the free next to it. And you're like, Oh boy. Yeah. Or then you just finally click, you click somewhere on the board and all of a sudden it goes whoosh, and the whole thing yeah. just like opens up and you're like, Oh man. And you just like hit the one little node that like really opened mm-hmm. things up. And I think the problem is a lot of people, they click around kind of putting things out there and they don't, the board doesn't open up right away and they kind of get discouraged or sidetracked and they just kind of go off course. But it happens every, in every single instance. It's like you keep clicking around and this sounds cheesy, but it works. It's like maybe sometimes you hit a bomb and you're like, Oh crap. And you feel like you have to start over. Right. But eventually yeah. you're going to hit something that's going to go whoo, and the thing's going to open up and it's going to go, oh, you know what? You need to talk to my friend and oh, this guy and some of these jobs come in and this and things yeah. just start to like happen. And then everything and I'm not saying you're never going to have setbacks from that point, right? Like everything is and entrepreneurship. You're always going to hit roadblocks and things like that. Before. Yeah. Yeah. So but I, I just I love to hear that, you know, you stuck with it and then boom, someone knew that, oh, hey, con- <clears throat> they thought about you for, hey, this guy needs construction photos i know my friend derek does that let me hook him up and then that person says oh who did you use for this and then as that kind of spider web gets bigger and bigger you just have more things pointing back to you more work comes in and if i'm just telling people like if you can just get 
over the hump to that point, like things become a lot easier, even though you, you should have to work hard and things. I feel like it's that initial push through it that uh, yeah, is hard. One hundred percent. I can't remember. It, it was one of it was one of your it was one of the podcasts in this last season. Um, but it was like grind, 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 nothing, nothing, nothing. And all of a sudden you're like, boom, like you're just like things are happening. And yeah. it, it, it was and that's exactly what happened. It was and I was chuckling to myself when I had left the um, construction, the, the house renovation job. And then I went over to the other, the patio um, construction, um, the pat, the finished patio pro- job. And I was just like, I just knocked out two jobs in a day. And I was just like, like, I'm in the middle of exactly what you guys had talked about in like yeah. multiple episodes. So it was pretty cool because it's like, it's right. awesome. Yeah. I was like, again, like, you know, take a moment to appreciate like, you know, when, when you do have a good win. Um, and then to, uh, you know, deflate the balloon a little bit, um, it's not a completely, you know, uh, unhappy ending, but I had, um, gotten a job from a local gardening company, um, a, a nursery, uh, in town and they had seen my work and they were like, you know, could you shoot a video for us for the business? Um, uh, you know, when the trees come into bloom. So, and then, you know, maybe get all the landscaping trucks. I was like, yeah, absolutely. And then they were like, you know, would you mind shooting um, a Mother's Day promo in our greenhouse? Everything's popping. There's a bunch of colors. I was like, this is exciting. So, you know, I go in there and I just bought a new handheld gimbal. And, you know, it showed up in Amazon like the day before. And I bought a new I I bought a new um, Canon a couple of months before. Hadn't shot a lot of video on it. So, you know, you're making me nervous with this story. (laughs) Yeah, I'm doing like backyard beta testing like. Two days before, the day before, I'm like, all right, I think I got this. And then I just didn't allocate a ton of time for it. So it's just like, needless to say, like, it was not the greatest video experience. And it took a ton of time because, again, I was dealing with a really cruddy computer. So it was just like, I was just like, I ended up giving the work to them. And I'm like, you know, I'm not charging you for this one. I'm like, I'm like, I, I, it was a horrible experience for me to do this to you. And I, you know, you guys are like coming up on Friday night before Mother's Day. So you almost have no time to run this. Um, so just owning it and being able to be like, you know what? Like it was, it was not the greatest thing, but you know, I know, I'm, you know, I, I can, you know, here's other work that I've done that I can prove myself. So we're carrying on and we're going to finish the rest of the job. So it's got a, at least a good ending, but you know, it's, you're going to have those setback moments and you just have to own them. Yeah, I mean, and here's the thing, though. I mean, again, kudos to you for kind of owning up, owning that. And I'm sure they appreciate that transparency and honesty. But, you know, you maybe go through that. And now, you know, hey, next time you get a job, you're going to be like, cool, this happened last time. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to prepare. I'm going to go further out in advance. I'm going to line this stuff. You know, like you, that's just sometimes you have to work out the kinks of that stuff, new gear, whatever, lack of prep time. You know, maybe we're not all having, we're not on it 100% every day. Um, but I think the fact, as long as you can learn from that, you know, next time, all right, well, that didn't go well because of X, Y, Z next time I need to make sure I have this stuff yeah. lined up in advance or I'm going to make myself a checklist or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. that just, it just happens. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't beat yourself up too much about it too. Yeah. I was just, one of those things where you're like, all right, you know, I got to move on from this. Cause there's like, you sit yeah. there and dwell on it. Like nothing good's going to come of it. But so it's like, you know, know your equipment and, you know, understand your settings, understand how frame rates work when you're trying to do slow motion for um you know shots and you know just it, it was it was an incredible learning moment and that's kind of the way i looked at it. it's like all right learning yeah. opportunity move on and i made yeah. the improvements on you know subsequent jobs and it's helped me make better work from the last ones that i've done since then so you know it's uh it, it's it's a constant game of you know making improvements and educating yourself that's awesome well you know Congrats for getting to the 1K mark per month. Thank you know, you. I hope your business continues to grow. What's your What are your kind of plans if you were think about your um, and your business? You say 3805. Is that how you say your production? Yeah, 3805. Okay, so if you're thinking, okay, 3805, the next year to two years, here's what I want to do with it. Here's where I see it going. Here's here are the steps that I'm going to take to get it there. Kind of like lay out your plan for us, so where you see it going and what you're going to do. Um, man, good question. Um, you know, I mean, building on what I've already done, it's it, the, the construction piece of it. I'd like that to be the cornerstone of it. Um, mm-hmm. 
you know, I want to be able to diversify enough where I've got different revenue streams because there's going to be a point where each of these market segments are going to slow down through different times of the year. We're coming out of COVID, so I built a headshot um, portion of my uh, of my business in, and I've been able to do a couple of jobs on that. So I'd like to be able to grow that. You know, once everybody's dropping COVID weight and feeling better about themselves, <laughs> um, and being able to um, you know be being you know, wanted to update their, uh, their, their portfolio or update their uh, headshots on LinkedIn or whatever. So I'd like to be able to grow that piece of it. Um, the construction piece has been exciting though. I love it. It's really, yeah. it's just, um, it, it, it's been awesome. I love just being around the equipment, being around, you know, trying to get the shots of people working and really trying to get creative shots on the sites and then just seeing that evolve over time. So that part of it, I'd like that to be kind of the big piece of it. Um, and then another piece I haven't even touched on is I started making snow globes off of um, 3D maps, 3D models that I had generated um, through. Yeah, that's interesting. Tell us about that a little bit. Yeah, I just got a yada yada over that one. Um, <clears throat> so when I got drone, I, so I got drone deploy like after I'd gotten the the Mavic, um, and I just started you know mapping my house, doing modeling my house, all my neighbors' houses. And, um, and I was talking to my buddy, um, I was like, you know, what do you, you know, what can we do with that? And so, you know, we're talking about the potential and like, you know, there's a ton of money in this. So it just, at some point I'd read like, you know, oh, you can actually 3D print, you know, this, you know, you can 3D print uh, your digital models. And I was like, huh. Cool. And then like three, like heartbeats later is like snow globes. So <laughs> I bounced it on my buddy and he was like, dude, you got to do that. So it took about a year and a half and I'd sent a, a um, STL file out to somebody. It cost me like a hundred bucks. It wasn't exactly what I wanted back. And I'm like, started looking at 3D printers and this is going back in the um, fall. And I was like, for $300, I can own my own 3D printer. So I just did that. And um, so I just bought a 3D printer and I just started printing up um, some buildings that I had uh, made. And I just started like, again, YouTubing, like how to make a snow globe. So <laughs> I spent like the latter part of the fall into the holiday season. I'm like, I'm going to make a ton of money doing this and ended up selling like, actually I didn't sell any cause it was like a horribly, it was like just something, but <laughs> by the end of everything I'd made like snow globes for my neighbors. And like the, the end of the whole experience was like, it was awesome because like, I now have like all of the, 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 basically the pains of the growing experience had gone through those. I improved the snow globes. I found a good vendor. Um, so I just, I'm like, all right, let's build that one in. So, you know, as the, you know, weather starts turning, I'm like, I can start looking at doing some snow globes and some custom work on those. Um, you know, whether or not I break the bank with it, um, who, you know, who cares? It's, it, it was really, it's, it's fun. It's something that there's not a ton of snow globe manufacturers out there for, for custom yeah, that's home a, jobs. Yeah. That's a cool idea. I mean, if anything, it can be a cool, cool, like custom gift item too. But, you know, again, if I'm thinking about it from that perspective, this gave you a reason to go out and learn how to do 3d models and get better at mapping and all that stuff. And then Absolutely. figure out how to do 3d printing, you know, it's funny. I don't know if you've heard uh, Root Patel. He's on a different podcast guest. He's a guy, instructor one of our courses. But Root. he, yeah, actually, he walked by earlier in this episode down here, going to his office. Did he? Um, yeah, I saw him walk by. He's um, awesome. But uh, he's actually, <laughs> I've, I've been hanging out with him lately, and he's 3D printing his own fixed wing drone. We have some 3D printers in the, the basement of this uh, office space, and uh, and he's just, yeah, he's just figured out like, oh, I bet I could do this, and he's testing that out and doing different things. So, I mean, doing that stuff is just, it's good to learn, figure things out. Cause you never know when you're going to have to apply those same skills to something else. Maybe, yeah. uh, maybe not the 3d, maybe not the 3d printer stuff as much, but the, how to do 3d models and understanding that you can export that and use them for different uses and just expanding your skill set, your knowledge, yeah. like having a reason to dive in and learn that stuff. You know, if you didn't do that and you were just always yeah. kind of, Oh, maybe I'll do that later. You would just, I don't know, never force yourself to learn it. You'd never, um, never get anywhere. And Root always inspires me because he's always coming up with new crazy ideas. And like you said about like, hey, I didn't really know how to do this job, but I did. Root was telling me about, he just got, well, I don't know if he was telling this, but I won't say with who, but he got probably it's going to be the largest contract that he's ever gotten in his business with a company doing tons and tons of mapping stuff. And he's like, half the stuff they were telling me 
he's like, you know, they're like, can you do this? He's like, I didn't know exactly what it was, but I knew I could figure it out. And I was like, oh, we'll make it happen. You know, and just that attitude of, hey, I'll figure it out. We'll make it happen. Um, he's, and just he's got, it. Like, it, so not to uh, not not to step on your story, too. I accidentally pocket dialed him on Instagram the other day. Oh, really? <laughs> um, yeah, he posted something. It was like it was his 3D print of his, his latest thing. And I'm like, amazing work, man. And like true to form, like root, like he will write back to you like within seconds. And I'm like, how is this guy doing this? Like he doesn't sleep, <laughs> but he's he really like so that. accessible and he's just so um, approachable. And like, he's going to be like one of the biggest players in this industry very soon, if he's not already is. And yeah. so I accidentally pocket dialed him. I was on the grill and I put my phone away and I hear like, hello. And I'm like, oh no. So I pick it up and he's on the phone. And I was just like, oh, hey, because I responded to a post. And like, so I, so he's walking me through the hangar of like the facility. And I'm like, this dude's like 20 something years old. And he's like walking through like a NASA, like rocket hangar of a, of a 3D, just 3D printed. So, um, you know, you get some great guests, man. You've got, you know, they're not only great, like, you know, entrepreneurs, but just good people too. Yeah. You know, and people who want to share and help people out, I think that's what it's all about and share their experience. And, and again, we try to get, I, it's great to get people from all across the spectrum, right? People that are, Hey, I'm just starting out and I'm finding some success yeah. to people that are like, have been in the industry for several years. So, um, so I'm, I'm glad you're able to come on and share your story and hope to have you back on when you, I don't know, you're crushing it even more. We'll get you on in another season. Um, but, uh, but I love to hear your story. So yeah, no, that'd be oh. exciting. Um, and, you know, and, and, you know, I'll offer this too, because, a few of your guests have been awesome. They've been very accommodating to me because, like, I'll listen to an episode. I'll be like, I'm like, oh, Jonathan Stetler, I'm going to be right there. So I like, I email, so I like write to him, and he like, we've been going back and forth for months. Chris D'Antonio, awesome. Root, um, Philip Hurst, like, all good dude. Cody from last season. I'm like, these yeah. are all good dudes, like that. Just like you know, everyone's in it together. So yeah. um, you know, awesome. I, I, can't, I can't not avail myself to folks too. So you know, if you're you know, when you hear this episode. And you got some random questions or want to know about snow globes um, or, or political campaigns? Um, you know, feel free to uh, hit me up. No, that's awesome. I appreciate it. Well, on that note, where can people uh, find out more about you? So, website, yeah. social media, kind of give us your stuff here. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my website is like, and I've been sitting on this one forever. So the drone one K pot, the uh, course has been hugely uh, inspirational for this. So my website, oh, it's thirty eight oh five productions dot com. Okay. Um, and then uh, Instagram, it's uh, Derek Cameron twenty one. Um, okay. And then um, Facebook is um, it's Facebook dot com uh, slash thirty eight oh five productions. Okay. Um, so I'm a, I'm a pretty pretty available guy. Um, so awesome. you know, people have questions or you know um, you know want to connect, you know, feel free to reach out. Sweet. And then for those of you who are like, oh, crap, I didn't write all this down. Just we'll go to the, if you go to the show notes. Yeah. for the podcast uh, or the description. We'll, we'll try to link it up in there so that you can uh, just click on them or, or see what they look like there. So cool. Well, thanks again, Derek. Appreciate you coming on me. It was great to uh, great to talk to you, get your story. And uh, I'm sure everyone appreciated, you know, hearing your experience. So uh, thanks again. No, David, I appreciate it. Thanks for letting me ramble on here and uh, look forward to uh, hopefully making out again, but I'll see you out on the internet at somewhere. Sounds great. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that chat with Derek. Um, again, I was loved seeing someone who went from just being a podcast listener to starting a business to getting it to where it was successful enough to be on the podcast. It was really fun to see uh, and cool to uh, hear Derek's story on that and see his drive to succeed. So I hope you got some inspiration from that and uh, gleaned some insights uh, to be able to maybe do something like that of your own, or maybe you just enjoy listening to these to hear what other people are up to. Um, either way, I appreciate you tuning in all the way to the end. Um, also, just to, to remind you, we have a bunch of courses on drones, starting drone businesses, um, different things in drone industries. We're wrapping up a course right now on doing mapping and 3D modeling. That course is taught by Root Patel, who was on season three. Um, he did, he does, has a great business called Voyager Industries where he makes um, some good uh, full-time income doing drone mapping and modeling. Um, so he's teaching that, loving that course. We have our business courses, the Drone Business Mastery Program, where it shows you how to get an entire drone business off of the ground, starting from scratch. Uh, we have everything from CPAs, six-figure drone business owners, um, 
internet marketing experts, website experts, a whole bunch of people on there um, in those courses teaching you uh, how to be a business owner that succeeds with a drone business. So you can check that out if you want, Drone Business Mastery. You can buy the whole program or you can just buy pieces of the program since it's um, so large. You can just buy um, certain sections if you like. Uh, we do the Part 107 Test Prep. We have our Aerial Video A to Z course, which is really popular, teaching all about aerial cinematography taught by um, instructor Alex Harris, who used to be a Hollywood videographer and editor. Uh, we have courses on roof inspections, a lot of stuff. So go check that out. Um, if there's something that interests you, uh, feel free to jump in or to uh, email us at support at dronelaunchacademy.com and ask us um, some more questions. So thanks again for listening in. Hope you found it useful and we'll talk to you later.